It's been less than six months since the original iPad Pro came out, and we've already got a new one, a 9.7 inch model, to play with. Apple basically took everything that was important about the iPad Pro and stuck it in the body of the iPad Air 2, which is great, but a few things didn't make the transition. Most notably, while there is a powerful A9X chipset inside, just like in the first Pro, it only has two gigabytes of RAM down from four in the big guy. Apple wouldn't comment on why they made the change, but fortunately, this smaller Pro still screams. And more importantly, it screams in a body that you can easily hold with one hand. I've thrown games at it, I've thrown 3D modeling apps at it, I've thrown days of multitasking at it, and it's handled all of that really, really nicely. Now we need to talk about the display. It's the same size and resolution as the Air 2, so it's not any sharper, but it's bright enough to be absolutely fantastic under the sun, which is really helpful as we head into spring and summer. It's a great reading machine too, thanks to a feature called True Tone. It basically figures out what the light around you looks like and changes the screen's color temperature, so you're always looking at natural colors. Oh, and since you'll probably be using this thing for movies at some point, rest assured the four speakers drilled into each corner of the iPad Pro sound absolutely fantastic. High frequencies and mids get routed to upper speakers, and lower frequencies get routed to lower ones, so you've always got a pretty dynamic balance of sound. But here's what you need to keep in mind. For most of the things people do with their tablets, so reading, watching movies, surfing the web, this Pro might actually be overkill. It's when you start to run those complex applications and multitask that this extra horsepower really comes in handy. After all, Apple likes to call its iPad Pros the ultimate PC replacement, which I don't really agree with, not yet. Don't get me wrong, the power is there. The power isn't the issue. The issue, well, there are a few. Apple's approach to multitasking, for one, could use a little bit of work. In order to change the order of your left and right apps, you have to close the left app, make the right app full screen, and then reopen the app that was on the left. And also, when you're sliding over to view the apps you can bring up in a separate window, you have to do a lot of swiping. There's no elegant way to find what you're looking for really easily. The iPad Pro's dimensions might make things trickier too, especially if you're looking to use this as a full-on product productivity machine. You've just got less room to work with here, and it also means that the smart keyboard, which retails for $149, is smaller too. Now the spacing between the keys is still just about the same as it was before, but the keys themselves are smaller, which makes typing just a little more difficult, especially if you have big fingers like I do. On the flip side, the Apple Pencil is still fantastic. I've been using it this week to sketch stuff and jot down notes, and it's actually much more comfortable now that I've got an iPad Pro that's the size of a clipboard instead of, say, an easel. In the end, whether or not this this iPad Pro is worth it for you kind of depends on what your definition of Pro is. If you need something that's going to replace your laptop completely, this might not be the way to go. On the other hand, if you're looking for a tablet with plenty of horsepower and can get you rethinking what's actually capable, what you can get done on a tablet, well, give this thing the time of day. It might not be Pro enough for everybody, but it is easily the best 9.7 inch iPad Apple has ever made.